Daniel Jackson and Jack O'Neill, the most iconic TV duo of all time. Of all time? Did you not see Atlantis? McKay and Shepard were way better. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. Shut up, Matt. I absolutely love Atlantis, and I absolutely love Shepard and McKay. But the relationship between Shepard and McKay and the relationship between Jack and Daniel is way different. And I love them both in different ways, but I, I just prefer Jack and Daniel slightly more, and these are the reasons why. Now, I wholeheartedly believe that the differences between Shepard and McKay and Jack and Daniel are very different. The reasons why I think they're very different is Jack and Daniel's relationship is a relationship built on trust. It's built on mutual respect, whereas Shepard and McKay, their relationship is built on comedy. It's built on sibling rivalry is how I would describe Shepard and McKay. They're trying to one-up each other, they're trying to annoy each other, and it works really well on screen. It's absolutely fantastic to watch. It's just not the same relationship as Jack and Daniel. You see, with Jack and Daniel, their whole relationship was formed and built with that very first mission to Abydos back in the movie in 1994. Back when Kurt Russell and James Spader played Jack and Daniel instead of Richard Dean Anderson and Michael Shanks. That very mission was the solid foundation that built their relationship. Before that entire mission, Jack didn't like Daniel. He didn't like any scientist because they were sniveling and they were nerdy and he just didn't get on with that kind of person. But after that mission, he had a mutual respect for Daniel and they become close friends. And that's something that stuck with him throughout the entirety of the 10 seasons of Stargate. They had that mutual respect. See, the thing is with Jack and Daniel is they're very different people, but they went through something together that really connected them and bonded them for life and although they don't get along all the time and they do differ on their opinions quite a lot the mutual respect is there and although Daniel isn't part of the military and he doesn't have the consequences of being court-martialed if he disrespects you know the authority of the military he has that respect for Jack and I think that speaks volumes because as a civilian he cannot be punished he cannot be court martial or chucked in jail if he does something out of line if anything if if daniel did anything out of line jack would be the one to be punished but all that being said he has that freedom and yet still respects jack as if he was a member of the military because he has that that friendship with him and it is a true friendship it's a friendship that we see blossom and it grows, and it's the relationship that we see really comes ahead towards the end of the series. Daniel Jackson is an academic. He thinks with his head and he, th he acts with his heart. Jack, on the other hand, is very direct. He's a military man, he has been his entire life, and sometimes they clash, but they clash in a really genuine way. Their on-screen presence and their friendship is something that really resonates, and it's something that I actually genuinely believe. They've gone through something spectacular. They've went through the gate, they went to Abydos, and they defeated Ra together. Jack was there when he met his wife, and he was there when she was taken. Also, Daniel knows about Jack's struggles in his life. He knows about his son, and the fact that his marriage broke down. They've shared moments with each other that you wouldn't normally share with a colleague. And I think it's this sharing of experiences and experiencing them together that really makes their relationship special. See, the thing is with Jack and Daniel, no matter what happens, no matter what villain it is they're trying to defeat, no matter what situations they find themselves in, they know they can trust each other. They know that they can count on each other to have their backs. In the later seasons of SG-1 where Jack O'Neill was captured by Baal and he was continuously killed and resuscitated, who was it that came to Jack's side for comfort? It was Daniel. He was an ascended being at this point and he was breaking a ton of rules even just communicating with Jack, but he didn't care because he's not the kind of person that really cares about following the rules or regulations. He cares about people and he really cares about Jack, his friend. In yours. Be here for me. Damn straight. 
I'd have busted you out, blown this rat hole to hell, and made sure that son of a bitch suffered. The others would have stopped you. They'd have a hell of a fight on their hands. You wouldn't do Ball would be dead. Jack. I don't think I'd stop there. You're a better man than that. That's where you're wrong! In this episode, Jack pleads with him to do something. He says if he had the powers that he had, he would do something, and he would do even more than that. And I think that's something that really resonated with Daniel because, because like a few episodes later, Daniel Jackson breaks the rules and tries to defeat Anubis. Destroy me now. Do it now or I will destroy Anubis. I don't think that would have happened if he hadn't had that conversation with Jack. His friend in pain, in that moment, said something that really resonated with Daniel and changed the course for Daniel in his ascended state. He was ultimately cast out and he was no longer an ascended being anymore, but at least he did something and he learned something about himself. At the end of season two, when SG-1 returned after destroying uh, Apophis and Chlorel's ships, Jack is basically thinking that his friend Daniel has died. He's torn up and he's broken. And the very moment that he walks into the gate room and he sees Daniel, you can see the relief on his face. He hugs Daniel and you can just see it wash over him. He's so relieved that his friend is still alive. SG-1, there's someone who'd like to see you. Daniel. <laughs> Space monkey. Yeah. There were so many amazing moments like that in SG-1 that it's very hard to compare Daniel and Jack to uh, Shepard and McKay for things like that. See, I, I look at Shepard and McKay as more of a comedic duo their on-screen chemistry is more of sibling rivalry, in my opinion. They're trying to one-up each other and they're trying to annoy each other, and it's really fun to watch. I'm still trying to understand how you thought it was a good idea to test this device by having someone throw you off a balcony. Oh, believe me, that's not the first thing we tried. I shot him. But it doesn't feel as genuine and as closely connected as what Jack and Daniel are, and that's really the reason that I think Jack and Daniel are more iconic and they are the best duo for Stargate. I'll see you on Thursday for my video on McKay and Shepard and how I think they were just that little bit more interesting than Daniel and Jack. Here's the thing, I want to know what you think. What do you, Who do you like more? Do you like Jack and Daniel? Do you like Shepard and McKay? Give me your reasons why in the comment section down below. Whilst you're down there, hit like and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. Press the bell notification so you don't miss a single video and consider becoming a fully fledged side tracker. Hit the join button down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.